Latin American region are Red Cannons with Jay Shritta playing Greymane, Tyrael played by Typex, Ragnaros played by Hamtaro, Letho playing Falstad, and finally Vieira playing Karazim. Really step it up, keep that pressure here, and really benefit the team as best as he possibly can. But Spoy getting caught out on bottom. The damage there, but there's a beautiful burrow from Jung Ha. 38 skeletal defenders here. Red Cannon, Typex actually Ooh. goes in. His passive will be able to secure a question mark. It doesn't even need it. They end up getting it, but the drag, Vieira goes in to get the punches, and that is a beautiful response coming out from Jung Ha. L5 firing back. They now have to deal with the Punisher, who is not happy that there is a Lee being in the arena now. Um. Um. I'm gonna act like I didn't see the failure to teleport that circle. Beautiful drag there. Actually, Swoy missed the detainment strike, so no follow-up stun. Now the punishment going on to Swoy. Vieira goes in with Typex. They end up getting the pick now. Beautiful drag response, pulling it in, but Typex again, he has the Eldruin, he has the mobility here. They're gonna get their heroic abilities. It is a tough spot to be in for Red Cannons, though, because no blesses dove onto the back line. Catches Tyrael. Typex is out of here, but trying to catch Nacho Janet. Vieira went in two, one for one. They end up kinemating hard, but the passive does get the leaming. Beautiful drag onto Letho's barrel roll interrupted, and now that is three people dead for one. Yeah, I'm just going to start with the flight there from Letho. He's looking to join Jung Ha, coming to join the back line. Gets the drag onto Ragnaros. Sanctification is going to be used. So Fear Smash dropped the Aegis, blocks it from SESC, but Jung Ha eats all the damage. Oh, he does, but he got. Adaptation used. Ragnaros has already been the first to fall. Nachojin looking for those resets, but no one else quite in position. As I say that, they had a cocoon. They're all standing around. So Tyrael will be at least another one. We don't even need that. They Nobody stops Hintaro, though. Yeah, they see them all in core, and they're going to accept it. So they're just going to just blow up the damage. I didn't even worry about the rest of them getting a pick onto Jay Shrite. Hamtaro's life is not going to last much longer. Gus is here in six seconds. But with the camps up on mid, the pressure through bottom, I think L5 is Got this game. Oppressive it might be an understatement in this game. Now that L5 have found their groove. Once they hit 10, they never look back. Low respawn timers or not, Cocoon comes out, Vieira's gone. L5 take down the core of Red Cannons for game one. And once again in the red, the Red Cannons themselves with Jay Shritta playing Greymane, Vieira on Uther. Dahaka played by Hamtaro, Li Ming played by Letho, and Typex playing Varian. Uh, for now, it's just a lot of focus here in to the wave clear. L5 when committing. Ooh, nice stun. Root to be able to get the peel out. Nobles is getting body blocked by Red Cannons, but SESC gets the response. The hook is there. Viera lights out. That's first blood now for L5. But this is now going to be a fort going over to L5. What I love about that in Tomb 2 is that it stopped everybody from attacking Taunt, Nacho Jin out, horrified too. Hamtaro is caught from a lot of people, but so is Nacho Jin. Red cannons are collapsing. Hammer of Justice, goodbye, Nacho. I don't know if it's off cooldown, to be honest, but that's the third time I've seen and expected a route that it just didn't happen. But the burst after that taunt, holy cow, Typex sets it up, and Jay Shrite goes ahead and spikes it. Gotta get the kills, and he's stuck taunt. there. Taunt, Hammer, Tyke is down. Moving in, who's he gonna choose? Noble SB's the target. There goes the curse bullet. Lee Ming looking for the reset. Web Weaver getting the damage, but Hamtaro nopes right in behind the Horrify. Ends up landing there onto two, but Hamtaro is totally comfortable. Zhang Ha now looking to join. There is the Entomb. Oh, Divine Shield saved the day for Jay Shrita. He's trying to get out, doesn't have his cursed bullet yet. He used it to net that Stitch's kill. Everyone survives. Taunt oh, goes back in. Baby. We're not done yet. Meanwhile, the entire to other parts of the map, Web Weavers have been pushing away red cannons they don't have the macro but they sure do have the picks and miraculously in the small time frame during the web weavers being up where they needed the staggered death they're getting them left and right there is another one Zhang ha 100 to zero and so, so fast red cannons holds on but it still does not look good gilly red cannons hold on but just for a little bit because jay shrit that hit by the hook they trade out one for one in that stitches went down too but now things are going downhill and fast for red cannons they lose hamtaro as well and l5 closing in onto that 20 talent tier advantage young ha though got taunted it's a reset, but again, it's only a Leoric. It's a matter of time before this keep ends up falling. So pushing out the mid wave is going to benefit Vision the most. Hamtaro getting hook, cut hook, out will hook, hurt hook. them the most. And now the beautiful Entomb, he got the adaptation, the passive puff. Zhongla gets taunted and he goes down. He's down so far, 
Sure, Notch gets pretty low too. Jay Shrita goes in, gets the reset. Goldan's out of here. That's two kills for Red Cannons. They have 20 and they're feeling good. They're trying to keep everyone healthy, but there was a lot of dive trying to go in. You know, you've got uh, Dahaka, Hamtaro, you've got Greymane too, and then even Typhex taking damage. But it was an admirable fight for Red Cannons. But in the end, L5 were able to maintain their composure and take them out to win the series 2-0. You gotta have respect. It's gonna be a fun to watch, but on the right side, in red, will be Hamtaro on Dahaka, Typex on Varian, Vieira on Malfurion, Jay Shrite on Medivh, and Letho on Gul'dan. You see the extra stab damage coming from Avatar, so they're definitely gonna look to try and get back there and disrupt a lot of what's going on. As you can see, Scroll just going in, beating on anybody and everybody he can find as the portal does get Viera out, and they turn their eyes on Genji, get their first kill of the game. Zola gets the dash out, but a beautiful drag now on to Scroll. That is one kill, follow up onto the Eldruid. Unfortunate to say the least, we are on curse point for Red Cannons. They do have this fort to fall back to. We're gonna see if Soul Torchers can hold on for the moment. No sanctification, nor is there a clone here for this fight. Only Ancestral and the Avatar. This is crucial. They're going in. Hamtaro, he does get the drag on to Scroll, but he's able to heal up for the moment. Typex trying to look for the kill. We Zola, the no one. mana. On to Murden. Zola, no, no mana. They're going to all go through the portal at once. Hikari actually splitting from the team, but conveniently with his level one talent moving at mounted speed. Holy Ground will be here if 16 can be achieved for Soul Torturers. Avatar is in body soaking range. He's going to drop the clone. You see Zola, he's so hoping for it, but that means nobody is soaking for the 16. Avatar body is not getting the soak so maybe they will not get it twilight dream goes down and morden is already dead you got to think that that was a mistake there and cot dog is deep in the backside on that clone not able to do much of anything and that is going to be a free boss for red can it's a slight misplay there nice cleanse there onto zola who's trying to return some of that damage now scroll diving that back line Good ley line in return. Watch. We're looking for the Twilight Dream. But the sanctification is going to be there, Jay. How they just don't have the tools. They don't. Ice Block is going to be used with Malfurion in a very compromised position. The portal, Typex, not able to get there because of the stun. Because of the holy ground, it's going to keep Typex from going through. Nicely done there. Soul Tortures picks up two kills. Soul Tortures gets the kill, but the tribute is still up on top. Avatar has not made his rotation yet. They're jumping oh, over Letho, this pick. though. They oh, got a nice horrified. He's got, they got the cleanse on to Genji, though. He needs the cleanse, and not having that up, I don't think he can make it out. The portal, is that enough? Viera under assault. Ice block is there. The keep returning fire, but you can see the deflection. That is the clone. It is okay to go down as it's drawing all the fire. They don't Ham? under the keep. Hamtaro, oh, he, he's on the back line. He missed the drag. He popped the adaptation with no value. The holy ground getting the peel, but here is the portal. They're going in. They're going to see if they can get back on it as the ley line seal is there. Medivh is cheating right now. Scroll is diving the back line, but you can see the Twilight Dream has silenced multiple members, and this fight rages on. The ancestral does land. Hamtaro falls so very low. The taunt is actually used. Drag you in, taunt you the other way, but Hamtaro is now down. Gul'dan actually dies here too. Typex gets holy ground, zoned away, and now we find Soul Torturers the first keep of the game. Can Medivh and Malfurion stop this? I do not think so. I don't think so either, as we've got five members of Soul Torturers on the court. Medivh doing everything he can to defend. The shields are falling, and Soul Torturers is putting the pressure on. Dreadnought, a back and forth game here. Soul Torturers taking game number one. Patient play coming out from the Soul Torturers from beginning to end. In red, fittingly, is the red cannons. Hamtaro will be on Anubarak, Jay Shrite on Greymane, Typhex on Tyrael, Viera will be on Malfurion, and Letho on Vala. Typex, though, sniffing this out. Lolly on this camp, he does have the extra attack speed from Abathur, but oh. instantly diving over onto Jay Shrite. Greymane's gonna go down. The return damage onto Scroll. But Viera comes in with the clutch heals. The rotation there is enough for them at least to go blow for blow, and Loon's Grace Root should be available in the next couple seconds. All right, they're diving onto Scroll. He's getting stunned, he's getting rooted, but he's gonna dwarf toss away and be just fine, and all of a sudden we have the return pressure. Zola and Lolly going in on the double Illidan, but we do have the cocoon out on the other side. The cocoon peel is there. The leaping strike and the sanctification is going to drop. Twilight Dream is followed up. Will the Illidan go down? The dash, the divine shield gets him as he's so very low, but I don't know if he can make it out, J-Hat. They are 
and putting pressure on the Typex, who is going to be the first to fall. We are going to see if the explosion it does confirm the kill on the Uther, but we have three members down already. God Dog putting the pressure on, and that is a five man team wipe. But somebody else has to do it. Oh, that splintered spear is doing work. Typex is in deep. He's going to El Druids out. The Holy Ground is going to lock them out, at least for the moment. But the poison damage is doing so much sanctification already used. But so is D-Shield on the Illidan. They've got the cocoon and the isolation here. But a man down on the side of Soul Torturers. The Twilight Dream ends up getting dropped. But look at Lolly. He's just got so many heals to back up the ice block. Red cannons. Everybody's health bars are falling so very low. They're trying to turn it. Hikari will fall. But again, that is. Uther and look for Illidan to try and stay on top of this. Shrite and team are falling back, but they cannot give up the altar. And we see Scroll already working his way over. They have to go down. Tress, he starts. They, they don't see it. He starts to channel Hamtaro. He panics. Can he get this? The burrow. He can't. No, no, he does not. He doesn't get it. Soul Torturers, they win Towers of Doom. <laughs> And from the Latin America region, it is Red Canids with Typex on Genji, Jayshreed on Greymane, Hamtaro on Tyrael, Lethocurus on Falstad, and Viera on Lu. Uh, Team Dignitas playing it really, uh, really nicely. Oh, another hook hits! Hammer of wow. Justice! Lucio out of the house! Uh, finally, we don't have that talent when it can be proc. Good move. Can remove some slow bakery. Now, this could be game moment. I know it's six minutes, but this is how yeah. Dignitas oh, ended the game. Jason. They get a pick. <laughs> they two do picks. two picks. They take down the great the Lucio as well. Tyrael trying to poke in with its might. Not the highest damage ability in the world. Odin is already up. The boss with half health as the keep falls. Hook doesn't land. So the spawn timers are very low. With the boss at half health, this would be a risky but no heroic Dignitas, but they're still trying. Like you said, no heroics. They might hit if. Uh, if Red Cannons are able to pick up at least one kill. Snitch dropping low, able to move around though, attempting to dodge the damage. Uh, Latam, Red Cannons have played a lot of good games, a lot of very close games. Sometimes they're the leading by a heroics. big margin, but not this one. Red Cannons is going to go down to get the level 10, but the core goes down. Dignitas in an exhilarating... Red Canids in the red, and it's going to be Jay Shritte on Greymane, Fiera on Malfurion, Ham Taro on Tyrael, Typex on Stitches, and Lethosaurus on Tykers. This is well done by Taka. Red Canids. Darka. Oh, Fiera that's... left alone! Malfurion has been abandoned. Greymane has cocktail talents, though. He's trying to poke in. They only need four. Stitches just got deleted by Genji, who's now moving in. Dragonblade is up, trying to take down Malfurion, who is dragged and taken down. The Punisher does, in fact, go over to Red Cannons. He is. Where's the stick hook? Does not land. JPL jumps very aggressively. In comes nice Genji. The stack, keeping Malfurion alive. Twilight Dream gets Bakery and gets JPL. But Snitch is going off on this Genji into the back line. Takes not out Malfurion. He needs to turn around and try and get to him. Instead, Malfurion gets completely surrounded. Good stuff by JPL onto Letho, who will get locked down and finished off. Now Hamtaro shall meet the same fate. Grey made the only survivor, as he is clearing bot. Now Typex getting the living bomb applied to get into the back into the back, but the Divine, uh, sorry, the Ice Block was used here. Snitch looking for his opportunity. We already see Kael'thas going down as Bakery is focused to the Divine. Uh, the Divine Shield was already used, so there was no opportunity to save from the Twilight Dream. Tyrael is dropped as well, making it a two for two so far, as Snitch is getting chased down by three people. And here comes the 